I've been using the Samsung Galaxy S10 for over a week in 2024, although the phone was released in 2019. It might still be a good option if you want a decent phone and you don't want to break the bank. You can pick it up for around $200 and what you are getting kind of makes sense. There might be one or two issues, but this is the truth about the Samsung Galaxy S10 in 2020. For. The Galaxy S10 is a step up from the S10e that I reviewed earlier, but it is not what you will get with the S10 Plus in 2024. By the way, I'm testing old Samsung phones and this is the second video of that series. If you're interested in this type of videos, then subscribe to the channel and comment on which Samsung phone you'd like to see us review next. I also have links in the description in case you want to buy the phone and it goes a long way in supporting the channel. The phone has a glass back protected by Gorilla Glass 5 but it is best to make sure that you have a case on this phone and avoid dropping it. I love how it looks. I'm a big fan of the design and for me, it's one of the best designed Samsung phones of all time. What do you think about the design? Let us know in the comment section. You get three cameras at the back of this phone housed in a visor. Google surely got some inspiration for the Pixel's phone from the Samsung Galaxy S10 series. The frames are aluminium and on the right we have the unlock key while the volume rockers are by the left side. There is also a dedicated Bixby button but it has been discontinued. You can remap that in the settings to carry out other functions on the phone like opening apps or maybe the camera. It has slight curves at the back that makes it more comfortable to hold in the hand. The edges are not sharp as well so it doesn't dig into your palm while you are using the phone. It has dual speakers and they are loud with good bass. It sounds better than a lot of phones that I've tried in 2024. It also weighs around 157 grams making it lightweight compared to the bricks that we carry nowadays. The design and build quality stand out for 2024 and I'm sure you're going to enjoy using this phone by today's standard. The phone has an under display fingerprint scanner and it is noticeably fast. I mean, it's an ultrasonic under display fingerprint scanner. You don't even get it on the Samsung Galaxy A55. You get a 6.1 inch dynamic AMOLED display with up to 2K resolution. You can change the resolution in the settings if you want the 2K, but it will significantly drain the battery. Some of you will say it doesn't have a high refresh rate because it only 60 Hz. Well, the way the display looks super bright and colorful, you will even forget the need for a higher refresh rate. The slight curve on the side also adds to the comfort while using the display. It supports HDR10+, and the colors appear nice generally on the display. On paper, it maxes out at around 1200 nits of brightness, which is visible enough outdoors. You can also change the color mode in the settings if you want. The haptic feedback you get while typing is flagship level, and you won't get that typing experience on any phone around $200. The display is impressive, and it still stand out in 2024. The main camera here is 12 megapixel and you get another 12 megapixel telephoto lens and a 16 megapixel ultra wide lens. The cameras are really impressive and they complement each other. Enough of that 2 megapixel macro lens we get on phones nowadays. That thing is tiring and I see it is not useful. You get detailed and clean photos in daylight. You hardly see any traces of noise if your hands are stable. The HDR is present and I love the colors I'm getting on the pictures. They are true to life and the telephoto lens does a good job with zoom. You get some details and color but not on par with the main camera. The ultra wide lens is my favorite to play with and the images are nice overall. In low light, the images are great. There is a night nice mode for low light pictures and it's more suitable when snapping pictures in the night. There is a bit of delay while snapping in that mode but it enhances images snapped in low light conditions. The dynamic range is impressive as well as details. You get a little bit of blurriness if your hands are not stable while snapping pictures in low light. Portrait mode is great and background blur is quite okay. Those familiar with the Samsung UI know they can play with the blurriness level after they snapped the picture. The selfie camera is 10 megapixel and you get good images as well. There is this tone present in all images that you snap to the selfie camera and I'm impressed with it overall. You can shoot 4K videos with the front and back camera and there are a lot of phones out there, mid-range phones, budget phones, that only max out at 2K. This is a 4K video with the front facing camera of the Samsung Galaxy S10. Let me know what you think about the camera in the comment section. The audio you are also listening to is coming from the phone. I'd like to get your opinion. 4K 60 frames with the main camera of the Samsung Galaxy S10e. The good thing about it is that you can actually zoom in while recording with this phone. What do you think about the video quality and stability? It actually has EIS 
and I would like to know your opinion. My unit is powered by the Snapdragon 855, but there is a variant with Exynos 9820. If you are interested in buying this phone, then try to confirm the chipset before you buy and make sure it's the Snapdragon variant because it performs better than the Exynos variant. You get 6 or 8 gigs RAM and storage space can be up to 512. What I have with me here is 128 gigs storage space and loading apps is quick and you can use the phone for casual gaming. Why I say casual is because it gets hot after prolonged usage and it will be uncomfortable for you to hold. That's the first problem I encountered but it happened after using the phone for a long period of intensive gaming. The heating level is not near what you get with the Samsung Galaxy S10e. Multitasking is also impressive on the phone. You can use split screen Screen, open multiple apps and have them running in the background. The phone is running on Android 12 and that's the last software update for the Samsung Galaxy S10. The UI is clean and the animations are also quite smooth. The problem is that since there are no software updates, you won't be getting the latest features that Samsung are rolling out, like the circle to set that everyone is excited about. The software is typical of the One UI and you'll have fun customizing this phone to your taste. There isn't much to say about software because it's old and it's still one of the best Android interfaces out there. Now another problem with the lack of software update is that this phone might be prone to malware and virus attacks. The battery here is 3400 mAh and it can last about 5 hours under intensive usage. Now this phone is not for someone who is like a heavy user. It's a step up from the Samsung Galaxy SE though because I tested it earlier and I could barely get more than 3 hours on that phone. But I'm sure when I'm testing the S10 Plus, I'm going to get way better battery life. By the way, a sub to the channel will be appreciated. The battery is decent but not impressive. After all, it's less than 4000 mAh. It can last you a whole day if you use it minimally for just calls and casual scrolling. The phone supports 15 watts charging which is slow by 2024 standards. Even the Samsung Galaxy A series phones have been upgraded to at least 25 watt fast charging. Now what the A series phones don't have is reverse wireless charging. This phone can reverse charge other phones that support wireless charging. And some of the A series phones don't even have wireless charging but this phone has that feature. It supports wireless charging by up to 15 watts, I think. Now the Galaxy S10 is still a great phone and it has a good design, good display and camera. The battery and overheating might be the only noticeable drawbacks. Apart from that, I don't really see any problem with this phone and I can recommend it if someone wants a good performing device on a budget. What else do you want to know about the Samsung Galaxy S10? Let me know in the comments. If you are looking for something cheaper, then check out my Galaxy S10 e review. I'm going to see you in that video. I'm done. Thank God.